Every high school basketball player has dreams of one day playing in the NBA. It starts with committing to a college and performing well enough to get drafted, hoping you can stand the test of times between injuries and trades, maybe coming back to that same team that took a chance on you in the first place to eventually work in the front office. While the odds are heavily stacked against you, in Hoopland career mode, you have a chance. So after creating my player's name, height, weight, and hometown, I decided on an archetype. Now there were a few different ones to choose from. The two-way athletic slasher. You have great athleticism and hops, so obviously you can score the ball all around the rim. A very tight handle and your athleticism allows you to not only rebound, but block shots. But this comes at the cost of not being a great shooter from outside, and your lack of playmaking can sometimes result in you becoming too focused on a target. As a guard, I wanted to stay away from an archetype that didn't allow me to see the the full court and that's where the playmaking defensive anchor comes in great court vision on ball presence and decent handles overall are going to be nice as far as creating plays for your teammates but again we're limiting ourselves by not having a great shot and not being able to stretch the floor which is why the starting guard for lakeview high school is going to be a two-way three-level scorer while we don't have the upside of being an elite all-time defender we do have an amazing jump shot a very tight handle and good court vision overall being the fact that we're we're only 18 years old, I know we might get taller and our body is going to mature, so I could easily see this archetype developing into a wing as we get older, but with this archetype, teams know two things. We have a high motor and we can score the ball. The final quarter is underway, and Steve, we have a classic here. These two teams battling it out for the right to be named state champions and represent the Great Lake State. It truly has been a great game so far. You can see Greg Winston taking the ball up the court. He's got a nice pick and roll at the top. He finds the man on the outside wing, and they're going to knock it down. Bond from the corner. He's got seven points on the game so far. Winston putting that elite vision on display. He's always able to get his teammates involved. And Fowler finds the soft spot in the D. He's going to go to the line for two. He knocks down the second one. It's going to be a nine-point lead. A little hesitant at first. He puts up the floater. It's going to bobble left and right, and it falls in. He's got 19 points on the night so far. Lakeview down by three. Winston at the wing's going to knock down a three and tie this ball game up with two minutes left. Pick and roll at the top of the key. Winston draws the foul, but he cannot connect from three. First free throw for Winston off the front of the rim and out. He's got to knock down one of these free throws. It's another one that rattles off the back of the rim. Winston able to calm the nerves. 74 to 71 here. Winston spinning, drawing contact. Not going to get the call, but he gets the floater in. He's got 31 points on the night. If you're Lakeview, the ball has to go to Winston here. He's been an absolute flamethrower. They get the ball to Winston. That's huge. He's in ISO with Stanley. Pulls up the three, and he's got it. Wait. The refs are calling it a two. What a heartbreaker for Lakeview. That's going to be a tough bus ride home. His foot's on the line. Clinton Stanley is your player of the game, and Sterling Heights wins the Michigan Basketball State Championship. A heroic performance for Greg Winston. 33 points, four for five from three. But unfortunately, it was in vain. So now that the high school championship is over, we have to make our selection as far as our college that we're going to declare to. If we look at our D1 offers, we currently have five options, three of them being out west and two of them being more local. So as far as Michigan State goes, there is definitely a chance that we could get some good playing time, but I want to be able to contend, not just show off my skills. So I don't think that roster is in a position that can actually make a good run in the March Madness tournament. And the same thing goes for Indiana as well. So I think it leaves us to moving out west. Now, the reason we have three Pac-12 offers is because there was a Pac-12 scout at a lot of our games looking at other players in Michigan. And so they definitely spread a lot of words, a lot of news about us. And that is why we have Arizona, Oregon, and UCLA all giving us offers. Now, before we do make our selection, we do have a couple alternative routes. Obviously, a lot of NBA players, now that you have to at least have one year of college, take the other route. They do go sometimes either overseas or to the G League Ignite. It's definitely becoming a lot more widely accepted, and there's a ton of prospects coming out in this draft class that are either going to come from the G League Ignite. I think that for our sake, we should go the college route. We're not ready by any means. We're a very 
young prospect with a high ceiling. So I think it's between, for me, UCLA, which I think gives us a great option to start year one. We have a big man we can throw lobs to in a day, Mara. He's seven foot three. That kind of length is going to be so important for us as far as getting the pick and roll set up. However, if we play for Oregon, we're going to have a lot more chances to be on the court just because the team isn't nearly as talented and there's not as many young prospects to look forward to. Like I said, as much as I want to be able to show my skills, I need to be able to compete. And I think the majority of these D1 offers are not going to be able to form a team to make a deep run. And for those reasons, I'm going to be committing to the University of Los Angeles. We are officially a Bruin. We are joining the likes of Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, Reggie Miller, Russell Westbrook, and of course, the great Bill Walton, who we resemble a little bit more than the other players uh, for certain reasons. But I think the sky is the limit for Greg Winston. Assuming we can get on the court, show our skills, not only can this team make a deep run, I think that our progression is going to be limitless with our options around us. And this team has serious talent. Ade Mara was the 15th ranked prospect right behind Jared McCain. Adem Bona was ranked one spot behind Anthony Black, who was the number six overall pick. And our backcourt teammate Dylan Andrews was ranked one spot behind Jet Howard, and he was a lottery pick too. As far as our tendencies are concerned, we could develop them over time. Right now we have good touch as far as floaters go. Our athleticism is a little bit to be determined. Our shot selection is still a bit hesitant, and we haven't really developed many dribble moves like crossovers or spins, but those are going to come throughout time. You can see we have plus two pass and plus three as far as running plays is concerned. We take charges. We're, we're all about the effort. That's what this player is going to be based around, and we are going to eventually develop into one of the best shooters in time. Again, look at the overall potential for Greg Winston. He has the chance for a nine and a half out of 10 as far as the three-pointer is concerned. He has a chance for a 10 out of 10 dribbling. He's going to be breaking everybody's ankles. We've got all of the college rules set up for our league. Gameplay difficulty, all-star, except the only difference is we're going to have timing instead of player percentage so we can actually be rewarded for hitting our threes and hitting the timing overall. It's going to be a 20 minute game, which is equivalent to a 40 minute game if you just multiply it by two. Basically all of the college rules that you would see in the NCAA. Defensive three seconds is off. There is foul outs at five and a bonus situation at six since we're playing two halves instead of four quarters. As of now, you can see the projected starting five. We are sitting at the number two guard. I don't know if we're going to end up playing the point. It's still to be determined, but as you can see, a couple of really talented big men on this team but I honestly think that this team can develop and make a run to the championship in this season and our job is not going to be easy because game one we take on the number three team in the Duke Blue Devils it's going to be a mix between Jeremy Roach and Jared McCain and if we have to play the two it's Tyrese Proctor I mean this team might be the most talented team in the entire college landscape but we'll be taking on the Duke Blue Devils and introing the entire conference as a whole in the next episode. So be sure to leave a like if you're excited for this new series and be sure to subscribe so you don't miss the next episode. If you want links to the college and NBA rosters, they're going to be in the description as well as a link to the Discord so you can chat with me and a bunch of other people. As for me, I'll see you in the next one. Take it easy.